What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the FF Ballbusters podcast. Thank you for joining us. We are recording this on June 1st. Crazy that we're already in the month of June. This year is flying by. Um, but let's finish the intro here. My name is Eric. That's my co-host, Will. How are you feeling this morning, man? Dog, I'm feeling excited. Ready to run some stuff back, but it kind of in a different light this time around. So really excited for this one. <laughs> yeah, we, we had started kind of with our redraft rankings and we're going to switch it up. We're going to go back to the Dynasty realm where we've been for most of the offseason. We are going to be talking wide receiver tiers in Dynasty today. Um, but real quickly, before we get into the meat of the video, I just want to mention if you guys do enjoy the content that we're putting out for you guys, if you enjoy this video, leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a ton. We would very much appreciate it. Also, check out all of the great links down in the description below to some of our sponsors. We got some great promo codes for things like Dynasty Owner, um, for League Winners, for uh, underdog apparel fantasy. brands, Underdog Fantasy, if you want to get your gamble on, if you want to get your best ball on. Um, all sorts of different cool stuff down in the description below, along with a link to our Discord. If you want to join a great community of people constantly talking every single day to us and amongst themselves about trades about dynasty tier lists all that sort of good stuff go check it out so thank you very much for all that but let's get into this wider super tier list um will i think i want you to kick us off here it's pretty easy at the top of the list though i'm, I'm sure we'll agree here yeah the top of the list is super easy uh and this top tier starting it off is going to be jay jettis uh the man Absolutely. himself over in minnesota he, the team said they were going to use him a ton last year, and then they continued to use him a ton last year. He struggled towards the back end of last season, but honestly, that's just because he was the only person they really could throw the ball to out there. Uh, TJ Hawkinson showed up, but he's getting double covered a lot. They didn't really have another second wide receiver option. That's obviously different now with Jordan Addison. Should open up yeah. the field a little bit more now for Justin Jefferson even more, so that is kind of scary to think about, but definitely at the top of the rankings, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, no no argument there. He's only going to get better. He was already the wide receiver one overall last year and the wide receiver two behind Cooper Cup in points per game just by a little bit. You know, Cooper Cup only played nine games, so we don't need to discuss it that much further. Um, and then wide receiver two, Jamar Chase. Obvi. Obviously. Uh, very similar situation. Extremely young, incredibly pr productive so far in his career. Um, not quite to the level of Justin Jefferson yet. Last season, he did finish as the wide receiver five in points per game. He also missed quite a few games, only playing in 12. But he's linked to one of the best quarterbacks in football in Joe Burrow and will be for quite some time. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's any argument for those two guys. Yeah, there was, a, there was an interesting stat I saw the other day on Twitter. If I can find the tweet, I'll throw it up. But uh, it was saying something about first look. Uh, first read targets, right? Percentage, first read target percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Jefferson, not Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase's first year in the league, him and T. Higgins were split like 21%, 21%. Last year, it was 16% for T. Higgins, 37% for Jamar Chase. Holy crap. Yeah. So it's a huge number. Yeah. Good Lord. So it's steadily going up as well, I feel like. I think they're next door neighbors wow. as well in real life. So yeah. definitely the chemistry is there, and it's going to continue to get better and better as time goes along. So definitely excited yeah. for Jamar Chase going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, this ends the first tier. Does it do that for you as well? Absolutely. I don't think anybody else here is at this caliber. Yeah, okay. So they, I think most of the Dynasty community agrees as well. That is a clear tier break between those two guys and the rest of the pack. Uh, but there are plenty of interesting names still to talk about here in Tier 2. Will, I'll let you kick us off again. So for the third name on the list, starting off Tier 2, the first person I could think of, and the more I kind of rattled it around in my head, as much as I kind of don't like it, but I kind of do at the same time, I'm going with C.D. Lamb here to start out this second tier. Uh, just in terms of target competition and stuff like that in Dallas, he really is one of the main, like, in terms of elite options, he's the only one they really have out there in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, in terms of other receivers there, they got Michael Gallup, Jalen Tolbert, people who haven't really made too much of a splash. Michael Gallup's a solid receiver, but in no way is he really competition, competition for C.D. Lamb in terms of who is yeah. the alpha receiver here with this team. Yeah, they bring in Brandon Cooks, but same deal. Like mm -hmm. he's he's fine, but he's not on CD's level. I think CD does have a chance to really step up this year. Um, he was the wide receiver eight in points per game last year, and that was after a really rough start to the season. One with the Dak injury um, and just you know some some poor performance by him. But 
I think in the back half of the season, he really stepped up. And hopefully we see that through the entirety of this upcoming season. Definitely um, agree. But yeah, so I agree with you. He's also my wide receiver three. Um, this one, we'll see. We'll go to, to my wide receiver four. Okay. Uh, I have Garrett Wilson here. I also had Garrett Wilson there. Oh, let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah, so this one, in terms of straight-up production, he's not on the level of the guys that are on this list so far. Um, he was the... Where is he? Give me one sec. He was the wide receiver 31 in points per game last year. Um, and so there's definitely some explaining to do. Obviously, you know that was his rookie year last year. Um, biggest difference, of course, is the quarterback change. He goes from a combination of Zach Wilson, Joe Flacco, Mike White, who, whoever else, um, to Aaron Rodgers. So hopefully we see a big jump in terms of productivity from there. I think a big reason for uh, his lack of like counting stats is that he had one of the lowest catch percentages in the league and not due to any fault of his own but because of the off-target throw percentage from a lot of his quarterbacks um his catch percentage was only 56 and a half uh percent so he had 147 targets which was more than uh dk metcalf a lot more than chris olave another guy in his rookie class um <clears throat> but still ended up with less yards and touchdowns just because the ball wasn't making it to him yeah, that makes sense. It's just, it was a rough start to the season for sure. Bad, really bad quarterback play. But the games that Garrett Wilson, we got those flashes of what he can do. It was extremely exciting to watch. He just really has everything that you want in the wide receiver. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really excited for him and his outlook going forward. Uh, clearly, we're both really high on him. But let's get to your wide receiver five. My wide receiver five, again, this is there. I feel like stuff's going to start to get a little contentious right here. But at my wide receiver five, I have A.J. Brown here from the Philadelphia Eagles. Full agreement. Okay. Cool, We're cool, still cool. together. Still there. <laughs> uh, he's just the guy. He got traded over there. Everyone was kind of surprised about this trade. We thought that maybe, you know, there's always been this thing that first-year receivers with new teams usually kind of struggle getting in, getting used to it, getting chemistry. That did not happen with A.J. Brown. He was slotted in immediately. He's the alpha dog over there. Well, 1A, 1B with Devonta Smith, but we've seen last year they can both be productive on the same team, both extremely productive. The Eagles are showing no signs of turning around or being a worse team this year at all. If not, if anything, they're getting better. So definitely excited for A.J. Brown in the coming future, as well as just his overall production. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, he was the wide receiver seven in points per game. Devonta Smith is the wide receiver 15. So there is still a fairly substantial gap. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think you're you're right in calling them a 1A and 1B. And there were times where, you know, one or the other would kind of take over a game. But clearly, based on their performance last year, A.J. Brown is the guy there. Um, Absolutely. And he's still plenty young. He's incredibly physically gifted and talented as a receiver. So, yeah, I, I love him in this second tier. Um, I did debate putting another guy in here and I kind of, I, I kind of backed off of it. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how I feel. I want to discuss it with you, but do you have anybody else in this second tier? So I also had a group of two people that I thought, okay. well, no, no, I don't have them in this tier. I thought they could have possibly oh, okay. gone into it as well, but I ended up placing them into the next tier because next tier is pretty big for me. Yeah, because uh, it's a lot of people that I value pretty similarly. The per the people that I thought about putting in tier two are Jalen Waddle and Chris Olave towards the back end, but ended okay. up moving them down to tier three. Um, so in terms of where this tier ends for me, it's right here at AJ Brown, and we're moving on to the next set. But who did you have? Who are you thinking? All right, get, get ready for a potential hot take. Okay. Tyreek Hill. Ooh, okay. So, okay, I see the argument in terms of production because last year he was hyper-targeted, got a lot of yards. Obviously, he was in pace, on pace for even breaking the receiving yards record at one point yeah. in the season. So, I definitely that definitely makes sense. The only thing that concerns me is him talking about retiring. But Yes, so that's – and I think that's part of why I backed off of it. But let, let's talk about this a little bit because, mm -hmm. like – People like to talk about playing Dynasty in three-year windows. And I think I, I believe in that. I, I don't like to look too far into the future. There's only so much projection that's really even worth it because beyond that, you're just not going to be right. Right. Um, and so if we're talking about three-year windows, if Tyreek Hill is going to play for another three years, Jalen Waddell, who I also really like, 
I don't see there being a world where he outproduces Tyreek Hill for the next three years. Do you think that there's a chance that he really, truly overtakes him as the wide receiver one there? No, no. I think if, if anything, it's a 50-50, like 1A, 1B, but I don't think there's ever a time where it's just Jalen Waddle is the guy and Tyreek Hill is like the Robin, the his Batman. I don't I don't see that. Yeah. I just like, the part of the reason that I backed off of it is because there's some other guys in a similar age range that I don't feel quite as strongly about, but like just based on the argument in general, like the gap between Tyreek Hill and where I have those other guys was kind of too big for me to justify it. Um, but Tyree Kill is 29 years old. Uh, he, he just turned 29 recently, so he's going to be 29 throughout the entirety of this season. Mm -hmm. um, he was the wide receiver three in points per game with 16.9. Um, and like the guys that you mentioned and the guys that I, I do have in a similar range um, in Jalen Waddell and uh, Chris Olave, Waddle was at 13 points per game, the wide receiver 13. Olave was at 10.8 points per game, the wide receiver 25. Now, I expect Chris Olave to take a jump. That was his rookie year. Honestly, Andy Dalton actually performed pretty well last year, so I don't know how huge of an upgrade we're talking about with Derek Carr, but, you know, something. Fair. Um, but Waddle, I don't know that I expect his, his points per game to really increase that much with Tyreek Hill still there. That is fair. That's definitely fair. So if we're looking at that, like you said, in three game windows or three, three year windows, windows, sorry. Yeah. That does make sense. I see where you're coming from. The so the devil's advocate to that is like I do like to think about it in three year windows, but like let's say I'm competing and I want to compete for those three years or whatever. It'd be nice if I had a guy that could be a top five producer, not just dynasty asset, but like in redraft rankings, a top five player. And then at the end of that three-year window, I could still sell them to start my rebuild for a high price. But if Tyreek is going to retire at the end of three years, then I don't have that sell window still available, which is also kind of why I backed off. And I'm putting, for me, I'm putting him at the top of my tier three. Okay. So Tyreek Hill at the top of tier three. I like that. I do like the reasoning yeah? there. Yeah. Okay. Personally, I have Tyreek Hill a little bit lower, but based on the reasoning that you gave, I, I, I can be swayed. I kind of like, I see where you're coming from there. Okay. Especially if you do want to compete and you're just looking at pure just production. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So we got Tyreek Tyre Kill there in tier three. Um, who would be your next guy on the list? Uh, my next guy on the list. So I did have Waddle and Chris Olave at the yeah. top of my tier, t tier uh, three. So I'm probably going to throw Jalen Waddle up there after Tyreek. Yeah, I, I would do the same. Okay. I'm in full agreement there as well. Um. And so you you mentioned Chris Olave after him. Um, any uh, this is this is more about the tiers and less so about the specific rankings because right. again all of these guys are close They're together. Valued similarly, but, correct. Uh, how do you feel about Amon Ross St. Brown in in relation to Chris Olave? He's who I had right after him. Like yeah. I had him right there. So it's like a, it's like you said. This is more so about tiers than it is about like actual individual rankings. So I value yeah. these players extremely similarly, which is why I put them all here. So like Amon Ra being right there, and even if he slightly edges out somebody, I'm cool with that because I value them all pretty much the same in terms of their situations. Yeah, yeah I don't mind it either way. Uh, however you want to put him, Olave or Amon Ra. I do have Amon Ra one spot higher just because they're not too far off in age and Amon Ra is already, you know, at three points per game above him, Yeah, but they're fairly interchangeable for me as well. Absolutely. All right. And then who would your next player be here in tier three? I would probably see, this is where it gets tough. Cause it's a rotation of like three guys right here at this back okay. end of tier three for me. I think at the top of that, I've got Devonta Smith. I got Smitty. Fully agreed. Yeah. Yep. I have the same. Um, where's he? There he is. So I'll slide him up there as well. Um, yeah, Devonta, we briefly touched on him when we mentioned AJ Brown, but he's coming off of a really good season, especially near the back half of the year. He came on pretty strong. Uh, um, 136 targets, 95 receptions, almost 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, and he was the wide receiver 15 in points per game. Um, I do think with AJ Brown still being as young as he is, and also like Jalen Hurts showed that he is a good passer, but their pass volume is never going to be super high. Mm -hmm. So as long as both of those receivers are still in town, I don't like his ceiling is capped. 
Yeah, don't forget, uh, don't forget Dallas Goddard as well. Yeah. A lot of that time, Devonta Smith took that step up was because Dallas Goddard was out. Very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, so I love Dev- Devonta Smith, the player um, and the profile, but it's yeah, it's hard to see him really taking like a, that next step and jumping into a tier above with his current situation. Absolutely. All right, and then. For me, my next guy would be Drake London. Still agree. Still fully still agree. Still agree. Love that. In lockstep, um, Drake London did not. So he had a few games with good production, um, but a lot of last season was pretty rough. His his target earning was fantastic. It was through the roof. Um, you can make the argument that uh, one Kyle Pitts wasn't there. Once Kyle Pitts went down, there was literally nobody else to throw the ball to. But still, you'd rather see a guy earn those targets than not. And you can also make the argument that it was such a low volume passing offense that, like, even though technically his piece of the pie was huge, we're talking what what did what was his uh, target share? Let me look it up because I think it was like damn near thirty percent. I think it was. Um, I think some weeks it was even like thirty seven. Like some weeks it was astronomical. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. Overall, I'd probably say it was like 30, 31. Yeah, target share was 29.4%, a 32.6 red zone uh, target share. So that overall target share was fifth in the league. His target rate, which is targets per route run, was 32.4%, number two in the league. Um, So all of that is really impressive, and I don't want to take that away from him. But I think it is worth mentioning that we're talking about the lowest pass volume team in the league. And so... Yes, he had an incredibly high target share, but they were throwing the ball like less than 20 times a game. So ultimately, it wasn't like he was getting 10 targets a game. It was still like five or six, but it was out of a really small pie is all. And that's not going to get any bigger with Bijan there. (laughs) Yeah, I don't see it increasing all that much. Also, you know, I still don't know that I trust Desmond Ritter, maybe a little bit more than I, I trusted Mariota as a passer, but... Yeah, there, there's still limitations, at least to Drake London's production now. We'll see what happens in the future, but, you know, hard to project. I absolutely agree. And is does this end the tier for you? It does for me. It does end but the it, tier for me as well. Okay. So now I do want to bring this up because the way that I have it listed currently, it does end the tier for me. But I mentioned... Tyreek Hill, Mm -hmm. and I mentioned the three-year window and the production now. Mm -hmm. Tyreek is the one that I I believe most in that argument in. I don't know if that made sense the way I say it, but like the player who that argument makes the most sense for. But I think like Stefan Diggs kind of fits a similar mold. They're both 29. They're both in fantastic situations. Like that's another big part of this is because there's some other guys that are in a similar age range age range whose situations i don't believe in quite as much Mm -hmm. but he's got josh allen he's the wide receiver one like does he deserve to be in this tier three or is he a step down like what's the difference between him and tyree kill really Mm. that's a good question what is the difference between him and tyreek in terms of situation because <clears throat> Tyreek, like I said, was the wide receiver three in points per game at 16.9. Stefan Diggs was the wide receiver six with 16.4. And also, let me, I want to look up the numbers to make sure I'm not Same. saying this wrong. And Diggs is just but, a touch older, right? Like he's 30? He's he's still 29. He's 29 and a half, I think. Okay. Looking at player profiler, they, yeah, he's listed as 29 and a half and... Uh, Hill is listed as 29.2. Yeah, because his birthday was in March. Yeah. Um, uh, so hmm. I'm looking at this. Yeah, okay, so this this does line up. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't saying this wrong. Um, Diggs was... I, I'll have you talk about him and I'll do the math. But uh, after week nine, or starting from week nine, when Josh Allen had that elbow injury, Mm -hmm. his points per game was pretty dramatically reduced versus the first eight weeks of the season. Um, And he was still finished as the wide receiver six in points per game, only half a point behind Tyreek Hill. So, Um, But yeah, let me me do the math while you 
if that if that kind of is the case i see the logic and i see that like you can't really have tyreek especially you can't have tyreek at the top of tier three and then not have digs in this tier at all if that is the right. case you know what i'm saying so i feel like yeah. it's either a uh, tyreek has to move down in this tier or we have to throw in stefan Diggs at some point in this tier I, th I think I might be willing to put Stefan Diggs in here. What do, I, what do you think? I think so, too. And I'm looking like at the spot that I'm just kind of glaring at me right now is right in between Amon Ra and Chris Olave. It's kind of staring me in the face. Because the thing that separates Amon Ra for me in terms of just putting him a little bit above Diggs, and I might even consider possibly moving him above Tyreek, is the fact that he does have the target share that he has. He does have the role he has in his offense, and he's 25. You yeah. Know? In terms of yeah. dynasty, it almost makes sense to move him higher than the others. If we're going to do that, I feel like. You're you're saying move Amon Ra? I would move, above? I would move Amon Ra in front of Tyreek and then have Diggs. So move Amon Ra to the top of tier the third three. tier. Yeah above Tyreek and then have Tyreek and Stefan Diggs in similar spots. Because I just feel like Amon Ra, he is he does have similar volume stuff like that to Tyreek Hill. I think he struggled for a little bit last season, but so Yeah, he did that's true. He did deal with some injuries um and and some nagging injuries that he played through that could have impacted his total production. Mm -hmm. Um but like Diggs and Hill, like I said, were both north of 16 points per game where Amon Ra was at 13.4. Um, now, I agree with like the the overall argument that you're making, mm -hmm. uh, that the target share is there, that that's going to continue. He's going to be a, a higher producer than probably a lot of the other young guys on this list. Um, but Jamison Williams, once he finally comes back from his six-game suspension, is going to you know, earn a decent target share. Our boy Sam Laporta is true. there now. Jameer Gibbs is there now. That's true. There's a lot so of competition. There's a lot of competition. Yeah, I'm not saying that he he can't produce more than he is right now, but I don't necessarily like I don't think he can get into the production tier that Tyreek and Stefan Diggs are currently in. So you're putting Diggs above him? <sighs> See, yeah, that, that's the thing is like how much do I want to separate Tyreek from Diggs? And so I did the math. During the first eight weeks prior to Josh Allen's elbow injury, Diggs was averaging 20.8 points per game. Jesus. Like, the game breaking. Hmm. So, I mean, like, everybody loves to be ageist in Dynasty and loves to, you know rank the young guys high and, and day, a lot of times i agree day, you do have to go with the guys who are actually doing it you know i do have to, i do have to if agree with that if you want to win if you're trying yeah. to win championships you want the guys that are going to win you champion tyree kill and stefan diggs are going to do that for you again they're all in the same tier they are all in the same tier they're just there for different reasons so yeah i'm down to put stefan diggs in here honestly i yeah i'm down to put him right behind tyreek for right now okay Okay, so Tyreek, Stefan, then Jalen, Amon Ra, Chris Olave, Devonta Smith, yeah. Drake London. Can we at least move Amon Ra in front of Jalen Waddle? So let's look at some production numbers here. Amon Ra was at 13.4 last year. Jalen Waddle was at 13. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, it, at least... Amon Ra is the one yeah. in that offense. Jalen Waddle obviously has to compete with Tyreek, which we've talked about. I think Jalen Waddle is a better player than Amon Ra. Like, I agree. By a somewhat considerable amount. I agree. Absolutely. But we're looking at situations here, too. Yeah. I don't know that I would do that. Okay. But I mean, they're right next to each other. And we kinda, yeah, when we talked about it, they were kind of interchangeable to begin with. Right. I was just yeah, wondering. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was just, I was just asking. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They're, they're right there. They're neck and neck. Okay. 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 But uh, so that was. I loved. I loved that debate. I love fleshing that. You guys watching the video, hit us up in the comments what you think about kind of the ageism and dynasty. Whether you think these guys belong as high as we're ranking them right now. Whether you think the young guys should be ranked above. Just give us some some uh, thoughts on this whole discussion. I'd be intrigued to hear what you have to say.
Um, but with that, I think that does finally round out tier three. It was a huge tier group, but does that finish it up for you as well? Yeah, that's going to definitely round it out for me at that point. All right, so let's move on to the final tier here in tier four. Uh, I'll let you go first. So kicking off tier four, I've got T. Higgins at the start of it. Uh, he's Same. somebody who almost made the last tier for me as well. But when I saw that stat about the Jamar Chase, the first three targets, yeah. I was like, that's not concerning. But at the very least, it knocks down T. Higgins just a little bit for me, seeing that there's that big of a gap between the two. So, yeah. But T. Higgins is still going to produce. Obviously, he wants to stay with the team, and all of them want to keep the band together. So we're going to see if they can keep this trio together of him and then Joe Burrow and Jamar, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also production-wise, uh, and I know T. Higgins did deal with some injuries last year, uh, but a lot of these guys did as well. He was the wide receiver 19 in points per game at 11.5. He played 16 games. Jamar Chase played in 12. He was still out-targeted by Jamar Chase, 87 to 74. Or sorry, that's receptions. Uh, he was out-targeted by more than that, 134 to 109. Damn. Um, in, in four more games. Damn. So... Yeah, <laughs> but the positives for T. Higgins, he's also linked to Joe Burrow for the foreseeable future. So that's fantastic. A great offense. Um, and he's just incredibly talented, even though he's the wide receiver too there. Absolutely. All right. Next guy on this list for me, I feel like I feel like you're going to agree with this one, too. Uh, there might be some people in the dynasty community that aren't ready to put him here yet but it's jackson smith and jigba absolutely i was wondering if you were yes. gonna do this i got him right here let's go. literally same let's spot. go hell yeah yeah he's he's way too good to be ranked any lower than this i honestly i'd be shocked if by next off season he wasn't in tier three um uh, like yes there's a lot of malice to feed in seattle right now i think i think he's the best of the bunch i think he's Obviously, he's a much different receiver than what DK Metcalf brings to the table. But as far as fantasy production and what it takes to get that done, I think he's going to be a volume hog. And I think he's going to be like an Amon Ra on steroids. Yeah, I definitely agree. In, in terms of route runners, obviously, he was one of the best, if not the best in this draft class. Yeah. Uh, like you said, he's stepping into a spot where Pete Carroll's already talking about the guy and everything he's excited to do with him. Uh, pause. And... Um, <laughs> I'm just really excited to see JSN actually take some NFL snaps. Uh, so I yeah, definitely sure. have him in this spot, too. And okay, I bet. taking a look at the next spot, I actually have another rookie here as well. I had them back-to-back. -back. I don't know if you have him this high, but I have QJ up here in this tier. Whoa, yeah, okay. I have QJ up here. Just because I feel like in terms of, you know, he's obviously linked to Justin Herbert for the foreseeable future, probably the remainder of his career. Uh, he's got yep. a... He's got, you know, obviously guys in front of him like Keenan Allen. He's got Mike Williams there. But he fills out a different role than those two do. They're also getting older, Keenan Allen especially, starting to age out of the league a little bit now. So there is a road to him getting legitimate wide receiver one production within possibly even the next year, next couple of years. Yeah. There's some concern there. I see it. I can hear it. You didn't even I, have so him I in didn't... this tier, did you? I didn't, but it's <laughs> if you guys watched our Aaron Rodgers debate <laughs> in one of our most, I'm not gonna be quite that contentious. Uh, I I'm actually glad that you brought him up. I think he is definitely worth discussing here in this tier four. Um, maybe maybe I was wrong to overlook him. Um, so okay, can we can we come back to him? Because mm -hmm. I do want to talk about him, but I want to talk about some other names before we get. That's absolutely fair. I'll take him off the list for the moment, and then we'll come back and see where he fits in. Okay. So there's there's two names, uh, two two veteran older names that I have in this list, and Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams. I had a feeling you were going to look at them and throw them into this tier, to be honest with you, and I'm, I'm not mad at that. Not mad at that at Do all. You, so you don't have them in this tier for yourself? Not in, Well, it's just – it's like you said – people with dynasty you like to look at the younger players this and that these two are obviously hyper productive players so i did have them at the back end of this tier you know what i'm saying okay. i just didn't have them this early yeah. into it but yeah. in terms of production you literally cannot replace these two guys unless it's justin yeah. jefferson you know right so. and even justin jefferson in points per game last year was behind cooper cup right so it's just um, it's tough to disagree with that you know what i'm saying yeah so the the only reason because we talked about 
uh, Tyreek and um, and Stefan Diggs. One, they're both slightly younger. Uh, Cooper Cup is 30, and so is Devontae Adams, right? Devontae me, Adams might actually be 31 already. Let me check that so we're not lying to the people here. Devontae Adams is 30.4. 30.4. Four. Cooper Cup, I think, is 29.9. Yeah, so he's about to turn 30. Um, so honestly, not that huge of a difference um, in terms of age between Tyreek and, and Diggs. Um but their situations concern me a little bit more. With Cup, um, just where the Rams are at, like, I could see... I, I thought Stafford was going to retire before this year. Like, I didn't think he was going to come back. He is coming back, but I could absolutely see him retiring the following year. Um, and I, I could see Cooper Cup just kind of walking out with that whole group. Like, Aaron Donald, Matt Stafford, and Cooper Cup all kind of leaving at the same time. I could be wrong about that. Um... And, you know, if they if they win the Caleb Williams sweepstakes or maybe they get Drake May, then maybe I'd be eating my words on that. Um, but I'm just worried that he could walk away sooner rather than later. Um, and then Devontae Adams goes from Derek Carr to Jimmy Garoppolo. Not a huge downgrade, but Garoppolo is not nearly as good at pushing the ball down the field. Um, and so I think that's going to limit some big play upside for Devontae. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like, it's kind of taking away the best thing, the thing that he's best at in terms of just getting open making those contested catches. Um, I know he's not super happy with this situation as well. Yeah, he, he's made it known that uh, he does not see eye to eye with the front office of the Raiders in terms of their direction going forward. Um, so, yeah, that is that is concerning for sure. Yeah, but in terms of talent and everything else, absolutely no concerns there for Devontae Adams. Yeah. Okay, so you did have both of these guys in the tier just at the, ba at the back end. Correct, yeah, I did have them there. So, um, I only had one other guy on this list, but now that you bring up QJ, it does make me think. I had DK Metcalf at the back of this tier. I also you, had is DK, he in here? I had DK Metcalf right before Cooper Cup and uh, Devontae Adams. Yeah, so... Uh, now that I think about it, man, like Metcalf, where was he last year? Um, why am I not seeing him? There's Tyler Lockett. There's DK Metcalf. So he was he was the wide receiver 27 in points per game, putting up only 10.7 points per game. Um, he did so on 141 targets also. So like fairly high target volume. With JSN stepping in, I don't expect that to increase. Um, now, we have seen DK Metcalf's average depth of target drop fairly significantly over the past two years. I do expect that to go back up now that they have an underneath guy as talented as JSN, so he can be used more as a deep threat where I think he excels. Mm -hmm. um, but I expect with that change in role uh, for his target volume to go back down, so maybe more efficiency uh, but on less volume. So honestly, does DK even belong in this tier? Or is he a tier below? Mm, DK might actually not even belong in this tier. When you read it out, when you like spell it out kind of like that. And I think last year we really got an opportunity to see DK Metcalf as a receiver versus DK Metcalf as an athlete. Because he actually got put yeah. in a situation where, you know, Obviously, had Geno Smith at quarterback. Not saying that, like, you know, Geno Smith is worse than Russell Wilson, but, you know, at least we're talking in terms of Russell Wilson the year before last versus Geno Smith last year. I would say that Russell Wilson is better at getting the ball. It's tough to say. He was one of the best deep ball passers yeah. ever. Yeah, like he's Russell good at Wilson the was ball. so good at that. He's good at putting the ball in the right spot, especially yeah. deep. So yeah. DK Metcalf definitely benefited from that. And not having yeah. that last year, we kind of got to see, okay, what does DK Metcalf look like when he's got to get in his bag, you know? He's got to get right. open. He's got to make plays. And it just wasn't all that great. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I might be moving him off of this tier. Um, and then, yeah, you bring up QJ. Like, how does QJ compare to DK? Like, DK physically – is is more imposing and i think just a better athlete um and like it's hard by physically you mean like he's heavier he's heavier right 
Yeah, he's he's, he's a lot tall, heavier because he's not taller. How tall is DK? They're both six three. I'm pretty sure. Okay. DK is also six three. He's not like he's not like he's six five. Like he's not a giant. No, I'm, I mean, yeah, he is, I'm, but, yeah. But no, he's he's heavier. He's faster. Mm -hmm. That's really all I'm saying, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it it would be hard. Like I love QJ and his yak ability, but it's hard to say that he's better than DK at that. Like DK's a monster after the catch as well. That's true, but I, I was looking at it from more of a situation standpoint as well. The fact that he does have Justin Herbert there too, yeah, definitely gives him a bump. Because I for sure like Justin Herbert more than Geno Smith. I know that's a shocker for you Absolutely. guys out there, but <laughs> yeah, he's he's linked to Justin Herbert quite a long time. Keenan Allen is already thirty. Um, he's probably gonna be maybe not out of the league, but probably on the move um within the next year or two mm -hmm. and then mike williams did just re-sign to a big contract but he's also 28 uh he's had a career's worth of injuries he, he never stays healthy for a full season um so we could definitely see qj kind of grow into that role um if there's any time missed by mike williams um and unlike dk metcalf there's not another young stud wide receiver in the group with him so he would he would be the next guy to ascend i will say it is it is adorable that you use the word if right there if mike williams <laughs> misses time <laughs> <laughs> but um when yeah. when he misses time because i'm just i'm just thinking about all the times where like mike williams or keenan allen didn't play and the guys that did end up stepping up and producing for fantasy in those weeks like fucking what's the guy's name Palmer? Josh Palmer, Josh Palmer, yeah. Quentin Johnson is better than Josh Palmer. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, if it, we it ever... was Josh Palmer, DeAndre Carter. <laughs> yeah, it was like nobodies. So if he gets that kind of opportunity, I could see him doing a lot more with it than they did. Yeah, for sure. So okay, damn, are we we're saying QJ over, over. DK? At the back end of that tier, I wouldn't be mad at it. And then okay. D with all that being said, do you still think that QJ belongs in the with names like T. Higgins, JSN, Devontae Adams? That's the thing. So, hmm. One, we have no sample size to go on, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a major roadblock. But if I'm looking at guys that I'm more excited about who I think are going to produce at the levels that, you know, the guys in this tier are at, yeah, QJ might have to move down, at least for the time being. Yeah. So I think that'll do it. So I don't even know if I said at the beginning, I just mentioned that we're doing a wide receiver tier list. This is technically supposed to be a top 12 tier list, and we were just going to cut it off, uh, you know, like wherever our wide receiver 12 fell, we would just finish the end of that tier. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I think that'll probably do it for us, yeah? Uh, Actually, I'm, I'm taking a look at the list. So it's funny, right? We had um, our wide receiver 12 would have been in four until we put Stefan Diggs in the tier three. Ah, son of a bitch. Well, all right. You guys got some extra then. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got a whole extra tier because this shit would have ended at Drake London if we went top 12 with Diggs in there. So you guys got a top 17, I guess, with tiers, four tiers. So, yeah, pretty good yeah. stuff right there. I, I enjoyed the conversation. If you guys For enjoyed sure. the conversation as well, make sure you guys leave a like down below and comment if you feel like we got anything wrong because this stuff is it's very contentious stuff. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm 100% yeah. right. I know Eric's not going to act like he's 100% right either. We really don't know. So if you have any guy thing that you guys, any perspectives that you have that you want to push forward, let us know in the comments below and let's have a civil, let's have a civil discussion down below. We've had some people, yeah. you know, a little crazy, <laughs> but I get it. It's football. It is what we're it having is. fun. Yeah, we're having some fun yeah. out here. But um, and if you want to really get into it, join the Discord. Absolutely. Come, come at me. Let's go. If you want to get into some <laughs> real talks, join the Discord. Then we can really talk. <laughs> But with that being the case, man, thank you guys so much for watching as always. And make sure you guys hit that notification bell. That way you know when we drop all of our next videos because we're going through every single position group. We got to do running backs, quarterbacks, tight ends. So that stuff will be on its way soon. Uh, Eric, you have anything else for the people before we head out? Just real quick, also down in the description below, the links to our sponsors and partners. Underdog is down there. Dynasty Owner is down there. Um, League Winners, go check out League Winners. We are partnered with them. That's been great. Do Numbers is down there if you're looking for merch and apparel. All that good stuff, promo codes and everything down in the description below. But I think that's it. So thank you guys very much. 
for watching until the end. If you did, we love you. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.